All right, the Memorial Day weekend is behind us. Hope everybody had a, a great weekend, enjoyed family, enjoyed the barbecues, whatever you did. Go to the beach, uh, have a good time. I hope you all had a great weekend. I know uh, we certainly did here. And John and Jimmy joining me. I'm uh, Kim Bocamper here in the Audible. If you're watching this, you're watching this on Periscope. You can go ahead and send your questions in, just message bar. Go to the message bar at the bottom of the page, send it in. We'll get to your questions uh, as well as you can. John, uh, the Dolphins back on the practice field today uh, with another week of OTAs. They practice today, they'll practice tomorrow. Tomorrow, they'll practice Wednesday, and then that'll be it for this for this right. this phase. I, I'm still getting used to these different phases of OTAs and what they do. But I think we're in four. I don't know if it's three, but it's it's latter. It's in the latter stages because there's only 13 practices, yes. I believe. You know, for the entire phase from the beginning to the end. Right. So in the last uh, three are padded. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you you kind of get in the uh, in the mix of what you've got offensively and defensively. But it's been fun to watch. You know, kind of last week taking in some practices, watching guys on the defensive side catch up a little Mm -hmm. bit more to to the offense. I think the offense had the upper hand early. Uh, Ryan Tannehill, number one, Bo to me, looks really good. He looks athletic, doesn't look like he's missing any uh, movement from that knee injury last year. And uh, I, I think one of the big things on offense is that Devontae Parker looks bigger. Yeah. He looks stronger. Yeah. You know, he looks like more of a uh, a weapon on the outside yeah. that you may be able to get to, you know, may be able to help out Kenny Stills with that vertical stretch and may be able to help Juice out, you know, yeah. in that intermediate stuff. So a lot of the initial offense, defense, special teams uh, phases look look pretty good yeah. for Miami right now. I just ran into Devontae in um, – and. Uh, I tell you, he's a different guy. Yeah. You know, he carries himself differently. You know, he was kind of a quiet guy, kind of just a little slumped shoulder. Now you are, he's got his chest out. He, he, and you talk to him, and, and you can tell there's a different, he's got a different level. Uh, and, and it kind of it kind of goes hand in hand with what I've been hearing from coaches and people in this in this building that uh, that this guy is really taking that next step forward as far as being a professional and being the type of player. And nobody doubts his abilities as a receiver, his skills, and and what he can do. It's just about him getting there. And it certainly seems like he's turned a major major corner with uh, with the, with the way that he. Uh, carries himself going into this season. Well, I think it's all about confidence. You know, as a player, when you're playing with confidence, you really don't think about it. It just happens. When you make a couple of mistakes or you, you get exposed on a play or you drop a pass as a receiver, you start thinking about confidence, hey, you know, thinking about your route, thinking about all the little things. Right. But when it's rolling, things just happen. And I think things need to just happen for Devontae Parker this year. He needs to play with that confidence and not worry about the outcome go yeah. out know his assignment go out and know he's bigger faster stronger than he was he's healthier than he had been and if he could stay that way boy he's going to give ryan Tannehill a nice target Ooh. on the outside yeah, i tell you what he's really gonna you know and I, and I keep thinking of just um you know the the tight end run down the middle uh, Julius Thomas running down the middle, and, and how much is going to force the safeties to kind of, st- you know, stay inside the numbers. Don't cheat, rather than get out yeah. there, and, and that's going to that's going to pay dividends for those guys outside. So a lot of good stuff. Hey, let's get to some of these questions. But before we do, I got to I got to answer this. Okay, I got to answer got, this Bo? once and for all. And I know it's not going to stop it because every now and then I'll go home and I'll, I'll take a look and I look at some of the comments. And, and if it's I not about your wardrobe, if, if I look, no, 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 no. Okay, if right. I look at comments and Leon. Leon, you you can you can I'm sure you can reinforce this, right? No, there's no chance, but go ahead. Every single day, right, Leon? Every day, multiple people chiming in. Let's we need to go back to the old throw the old uniforms, the old throwback uniforms. Everything you no matter what you do, you go it's on. It's a movement, there. baby. There's a question at Kaleska. Hey, Bo, what's it going to take to make those throwback uniforms permanent? You know what? I've I've I've, I've, I've tried to explain this, and I'm going to explain it again. And see, everyone in there got their th- – everyone, look, <laughs> I'm, with, I'm, with, I'm with everybody. I would much rather have those uniforms. Love those uniforms. They, they just they, – the, the, the color, the hue, the, all about them, just – Beautiful. They're right. They, they are the right uniforms for this team. Having said that, and I believe that there's a good majority of people within this organization that want that back, but – you know, when we spoke to Tom Garfinkel about this, we've spoken to different people about this. You change uniforms in the NFL. First of all, it takes you a number of years to make couple that change. Couple of years, couple of years. You've got to put it in in advance. It's got to be approved by the league, colors, logos, all these types of things. And then once you make that change, I want to say it's five years. 
before you can make another change. They don't want teams, you know, flip-flopping every, oh, we'll do these uniforms this year, we'll do these next year. We'll do, no, no, no. They, they make you say it's either four or five years. I believe it's five years. So okay. the Dolphins, I think, are in the third year, maybe going into the fourth year of these uniforms. So they cannot, by league rules, change the uniforms until after this moratorium is out so there. So it'll be it would be three years because if you add on the two after that, right. that you have to kind of wait. Yeah. All right. So so, so all right. look, so, I would say my guess would that be long of a my time. guess would be this. And hopefully you can put this thing to bed, but I know it's not because some of you knuckleheads out there Love the knuckleheads. aren't gonna listen to what's coming out of my mouth. Keep it coming, aren't knuckleheads. Listen to what I'm saying. And every time you're gonna oh, we need to change the uniforms. <laughs> we need to change the uniforms. It's not gonna happen for a couple of years. I believe when the time comes, I believe they will go back to those uniforms. I hope so. They're beautiful. I believe they'll go back to those uniforms. I will believe logo. they'll go back to the logo. It's going to be just what they want. Right. And then you know what? When they do that, there's going to be someone go. You know what? I really like those other uniforms. But so just so do do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Don't waste your time asking about uniform changes because it's not going to happen for a couple years. Now they're going to wear the throwback uniforms twice this year. That's great. You can wear those uniforms twice a year. So they'll wear them twice a that's year. That's the max. Until that's it. Okay. Twice a year. That's it. And so they'll wear them those times and it's going to create more of this But I, I like you talking about uniforms. It's you know? pretty good. Well, we you know cuz I mean, you got to straighten well, people the out. Next thing next thing up we can talk about mascots. <laughs> And their names, if you want to. All the shit that ain't important. <laughs> that nobody cares about. All the crap about. that don't mean nothing. nothing. Not a goddamn thing It doesn't mean anything. But that's what you guys want to talk about. That's all you want to talk about. Getting Bill. He, hey, Bo. Huh? But you do like the old Let logo. me ask you this. How did Ryan Tannehill look out there? Do you've been watching. Let you me ask say, you, 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 you've been out there. You you've been out now. there. I'm <laughs> so freaking pissed right now. Let me ask you this. What you you saw Ryan Tannehill out yes, there. Yes, I did. You look? look really oh, good. No one cares about that. But the, but logo. the logo is not going to change. Right. For two. Who cares about Ryan Tannehill? Care. Who cares hey, about Jay and Jai? Who cares here. about Indominus? You know Who cares about any of those guys? It's Pam all about the uniform and the logo. Change it. Get off it for a while. Jesus, crime and he's sakes alive. But we will be wearing it twice this year. Twice. All right, there, just so you know. And, and there's a good chance next year, you know how many times they'll wear it? Twice. twice. And you know if they're, are they going to change them this year? No. No. Are they going to change them next I year? I could pass this class. No. You're a good teacher, Bo. Yeah, I but could, these I could guys, probably pass they're, they're, something they're, they're like that. They're mouth breathers out there. They're knuckleheads. They don't ah, ah. So Leon, is he doing a pretty good job filtering this stuff so far? You guys wanted me to say, you you guys wanted that, didn't you? <laughs> well, it was right I'm here on you, the script. I'm telling you, Leon, give me a number. Bo just go me, crazy just about show the logo. Me with your hands. It's right here. How many times, how many people a day, a day, uh, post in here and ask the question, when are they going to go back to the old logos? Every, Every day. No, anything you post. Every no, day. Not just this show. Anything, but let me ask you this. This show, how many a day, how many people put that, how many people, when we're on for a half hour, how many people ask that question? 20, right? 15 to 20 people. Well, come well, on you, now. Well, you kind of did a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job putting uh, that to rest there, So bro. now, look, that we get through to that crap. Get that out the door. What, now we what get else to, do we now have? Now we get to something even is just as important. Let's go. It's come from Scooby Fins Up. What is crack a <laughs> <laughs> What's a crack a <laughs> I just saw this somewhere. I just saw this somewhere where they talk about crack a I guess that means like, you know, knocking people down, beating them up and doing the whole, well, they've been you know, getting on the field and instead of pussyfooting around, they're not allowed to do that. Let's go crack a a little bit. Nobody's crack a <laughs> on OTAs right now. Everybody's up. Everybody's no staying on the ground, off the ground. I don't know what crack a is, but you crack a is one of those words where, you know, you can, you, you can use it in a lot of ways. You know, I was driving down the road the other day, and I got a flat tire, and I'm driving along, I can hear better, crack a lack, crack a lack, crack a lack, crack a lack. I can hear it, man. crack a lack, crack a lack, you know? Or you say, you know, man, I watched the other f- a football game the other day. Yeah. Man, those guys look horrible in the first half. Second half, they came out, man, they was crack a lacking out there. <laughs> knocking people down and whatnot. I heard a few you can terms. Use it for a lot of different things. I heard a few terms at lunch today that I can't repeat <laughs> f- from the production crew, but we'll get to that afterwards. My phone. It's been crack a lacking because it's all broken on and stuff here. You, you can use it for times. anything, right? It fits anything out there. Crack a lacking. Scooby fins up. We're back it again. What game are you guys most interested in seeing live this season? The one where they wear the old logo. Yeah. That's both, the one no, I want to see. Games. That's the one both I want to see. Just those games. 
That's Bo- it. Both of those games. <laughs> Got to be on Monday night, right? Got to be Monday, Monday night. night. I'm looking to – you know what? The game I'm looking most forward to seeing live this season is when the Dolphins go up to New England and kick the crap out of the New England Boy, Patriots. that'd be nice. That's the one I want to see. That would be huge. You know, I was talking to uh, a bunch of the alumni guys this weekend yeah. o- over in the islands in the Bahamas. They had the Dan Marino and friends. Great weekend. But what happened was we started talking about the AFC East and how dominant the Dolphins were – Back when they were winning consistently, how how good they were yeah. against Buffalo and New York and New England. Now those teams have changed yeah. significantly since you know the seventies, eighties, nineties. But in two thousand, in two thousand and two, two thousand and three, when the New England started being yeah. the New England of what they are right now, uh, that dynamics change, and the Dolphins really haven't had a whole lot of success in winning records against the AFC East. Now last year, four and two, I said if the Dolphins yeah. don't do that again in two thousand and seventeen, or at least try to get that split yeah. with the New England Patriots and go 5-1, and one. that's their roadmap to yeah. get to 10, to get to 11, to get to another successful season where they're in the playoffs. And that would be a big shift for the Dolphins. It to would be, able, be. To be able to sweep the rest of the teams, split with New England, that, that would be ultimately the way you want to go. Yeah. All right, let's see. Where are we at here? Uh, at Lamel Ortiz, uh, what are your predictions for Parker if he becomes Tannehill's go-to guy? I, I don't know. I, you know I, I just think you know for him the sky's the limit. I mean, for you, he's a big, tall guy. He's rangy. He can run. He catches. He goes, climbs the ladder, goes up and gets balls. He fights for balls. He's become more physical. And, and I, I attribute him becoming more physical to him playing alongside Jarvis Landry and watching how physical Oh, there's Jarvis no plays. other. It's rubbed there's, off yeah. on him, no doubt about there's that. There's a Steve Smith senior, you yeah. know, uh, edge to Jarvis Landry. And, you know, some of that edge, sometimes it works against Jarvis. But most of the time, it works for Jarvis Landry. You know, this is yeah. a guy that takes away the football and that he can run after catch. He, he's not really going down with first contact. And if Devontae Parker can somehow garner a little bit of that when the ball's up in the air, the 50-50 throw, yeah. you know, if he can come down with some of those, those receptions in 2017, this guy could, this guy could go for 800, 900, yeah. close to 1,000 yeah. yards if he's able to be productive because his plays are going to be those home run plays, yeah. those stretch plays, those chunk yardage plays down the field. You'd like to see him. You'd like to see him this year be a ten plus touchdown guy. Absolutely. You know, I, I mean, in that in that range. I mean, you go back to the. You know, I don't know what the what the what's a touchdown record for receivers are now. I remember the. I remember when Mark Clayton did it with eighteen. Right. And that was unheard of at that time. But I think you look at. I, I think you look at what what if we think that he's going to be the kind of guy that um that that we know he can be. Then, then I don't think there's any question he can be a double dig, a double digit touchdown guy and, and maybe creep up, you know, in, in some big numbers there. The catch against the Rams coming back to the yeah. front pylon, the one that he, you know, potentially missed against the Ravens in the back corner yeah. where he had the little juggle. Those are the types of catches that Devontae Parker needs to make with regularity yes. in the red zone. Being able to come down with that catch because that's going to widen the field. For Jarvis Landry on the yep. inside, it's going to widen the field for a Thomas or a Fasano, yep. you know, and play action over the middle and getting that back end zone covered. Those are the types of plays you'd like to see. And the one thing you'd like to see Jarvis Landry adapt to in his game or add to his game is breaking that arm tackle, yep. being able to get that extra yard, move the chains or break that tackle and be able to go 40 and be able to make a big yep. play. Those are the things, I think, with the strength that we're talking about that we've seen so far in the offseason, the confidence factor, if he builds that into his his game, boy, it, it takes him to the next level. Yeah, no no doubt about it. I'm really looking forward to that. At Tilbert Jack, but would it be easier for Pouncey to play guard than center with his hip? Um, I, I don't know that I don't know what difference that makes. You know, you know, he's a he's a he's a hippie guy. You know, his 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 He's kind of got the long legs and the shorter upper body. And I don't know if that affects uh, is affecting his hips. But, look, I, I don't want to give up him at center. I, I, you, weaken your, you weaken your center position if you put him at guard. I, I like in, in Mike Pouncey at center. I, I, I like him I, I, being the director of that yes. offensive line. I want him to play as long as he possibly yeah. can. I want him to be healthy for a full season. And then let the, that interior go. Yeah. You know, I, I'd rather see him at center, to be honest. We with talked you. about it a little while back, uh, John, where we're with, with Mike Pouncey. We got a guy, a, a center as, as good as Mike Pouncey. He's going to make each guard better. Yeah. He's going to make both those people on one side. And just from the simple equation, if you say, okay, let's take him out of center and put him at guard, 
And you're not going to help that other guard on the other side. I want him right there in the center, like you said, making the calls, making the adjustments, being the leader in that offensive line, and helping those two guards as best he can because he does a lot. He does all those things when he's healthy. He does all those things. Yeah, and he and he still from the center position. Gets outside on that outside zone yep. run. He's out in front of running Let me tell you, He gets out there, he'll crack-a-lack somebody, too. <laughs> That's right. He will crack a lack and take them down. I'm to that to my college football. you got to keep that in there, crack-a-lack. Crack, yeah, Every crack oh, man, boy's a crack-a-lacking down there. <laughs> 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 who sent uh, that in? crack a Let me see who, let me who, who was sent that? that. That was Scooby Fins Up. What's Scooby crack-a-lacking? Fins Up. All right, I, I heard that somewhere in the last few days. He must have been watching the same show or whatever. Because I started to laugh when I heard crack lack too. So <laughs> it's kind of stuck with me. I like it. Uh, a black man game. Will Tannehill make a Matt Ryan type next step this season? He has all the weapons. Well, if Ryan's going to make a step, a big step forward, look, before he got hurt last year, John, I thought he made a, I thought he made a, a, a nice step forward. I, I think we saw a whole different yeah. Ryan Tannehill, certainly after the first five games last year prior to him getting hurt. I would expect him to continue to get better. And, and, and I think everybody expects him to take the next step up, how far he'll go. And like you said, certainly has all the weapons. Yes. You had that tight end. You got a great running receiving game. core. You got three running backs there that can do multiple things for you. You got a good offensive line in front of you. Um, he, he needs to step up and be the guy and, and, and take him to that that next level of quarterbacks. And I, and I don't have I don't have any reason to believe that he won't do that. I don't have any doubt in my mind that yep. he that he has the he has the ability to do yep. that. It, it's about coming up big in big situations. You know, for a quarterback, Ryan Tannehill has played really well throughout his young career, but it's been in stretches in in games at the end of halves or the end of, yep. of games or when you need that first down to stay on the field. I, I thought he did a really a, a better job of that last year because this Dolphin team <clears throat> won a lot of one-score games. You know, this is a yep. team that won a lot of tight-scoring games that they had to make plays at the end of the game. Well, if Ryan Tannehill needs to continue to progress and continue to be a consistent player in the playoffs, getting yep. his team to that area uh, of the season – He's going to have to continue to thrive yeah. and continue to progress. And with his arm strength, with his mobility, with his ability to run, I just think it's that quick twitch, you know, that that thing that he needs to improve on, anticipation. You know, that ball coming out just a half second yeah. earlier. And second year in this offense, you might see that a little bit more. Yeah. You know? John, you, you look at the majority of games in this league, or they're 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 decided by a, a field goal or, or, or less. I mean, I mean, this is a one score game. I mean, you look at it, and the majority of them are one score games. So you've got to have that ability to score late. And I keep going back to, look, I go all the way back to the Seattle game up there. And people kind of seem to forget this, but if you the game remember, was over, the game, you know, Ryan, Ryan takes that, takes them down, takes them 80 yards, 90 yards down the field, puts them ahead with about two and a half minutes left to play yeah. in the game. And, and you're saying, hey, look, here, look, the guy, he, the, can he take you down and put you? Look, a game no one thought he, the Dolphins could win. He never got the chance win. to see the ball again. No, he, gave you, he walked off the field with a lead. That's what you want out of your quarterback. I think that was a confidence builder for Ryan. And then he did it again. He did it in L.A. Yeah. He did it a number of times down the, down the, down the stretch with this, or this team before he got hurt. So I think he's ready to make that next step. You know, it's a, it's a collective thing that a team develops. You know, just like when, you know, the end of the San Diego game, when, yep. when you get the interception, you close the door and you yep. leave no doubt you know that's a, a shared environment it can't always rely on one side yep. of the football it always you know it, it takes all three of those phases we always talk about it sounds boring and cliche but you know sometimes it's going to be to the defense that has the hammer at the yep. end of the game they're going to close out a game most of the time it's going to be an offense trying to get that first down or getting into field goal range to be able to attempt a game-winning field goal or to get into the end zone to to really close out a football game. So it's a it's a shared environment when a team gets into the playoffs. When you go to 9, 10, 11, 12 wins a season, it's just not one side of the ball yeah. closing out games. No doubt about it. Um, at Trey 636, week one starter at linebacker. Will Timmons play all three downs? Um, I, I think Timmons is going to be in the – yeah, I, I think – well, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I say that, but, but you know, Kiko, you know, Kiko from a coverage standpoint, I would have to watch Lawrence Timmons play – and cover a little bit during training camp and, and see what his cover skills are like. Because if they're not up to Kiko, then I think Kiko's the guy that stays in if you go into the, the nickel-dime package. I think there's going to be a, a huge rotation yep. at that linebacker spot. I don't think you're going to see the same two linebackers, uh, you know, for a five-week stretch play the same positions. Yep. Because they're doing a great job of, of being able – 
to be multiple. You know, you've got McMillan that runs really well. He's got a good nose for the football. He led the Buckeyes in college yeah. in back-to-back seasons with total tackles. He's got to be a factor in his rookie year to make that that linebacking core solid. So he's going to get his run. If he shows it in the preseason in training camp, proves to this staff that he can be out there, he's going to get his run. Yeah. Kiko, if he stays healthy, he can play all three of those positions. Yeah. But as we've talked about on, on this show multiple times, this defense only has three linebackers on the field maybe 20% of the yeah, time yeah. of the snaps. So you're going to see two of those three in a, in a, in a good rotation of those three all yeah, year. No doubt. Now look, they're all going to play. Hopefully they all stay healthy. <clears throat> but Timmons, he's going to be between Timmons and and, uh, and Kiko, who, who would play three downs if that's the situation. At uh, Captain Finn's fans. And we haven't even mentioned Cole Misi. Uh, well, that's right. Well, Cole, know, it, Cole's the, he's he, the, wild he's the card. wild card guy. Yeah. If he can stay healthy... Well, he really he really brings a punch to that, uh, adds that depth. linebacker crew. Exactly. Oh, man, he adds yep. depth, and you've got strength all across yep, the board. No doubt. Uh, Captain Finn's fans, Orlando Franklin, we should – it's moving here. It's moving on me. There you go. Orlando Franklin, we should – Orlando Franklin, we should do to his familiarity with the gays. I'm thinking they're saying, or we should pick up Orlando Franklin because of his familiarity with gays. What I hear is that, look, they're, they're happy with where they're at. Yeah. <clears throat> they're happy with the guys they've got. They've got some guys that in Steen and Urbic that played last year. Uh, they go Larson. Out, uh, they go and get Ted Larson. Uh, they get Asiata in right. the draft. Uh, you've got Bushrod coming back. A lot they, of bodies. I, there are a lot of bodies, and I and I think they're going to give those guys the run. And if something happens during training camp and they're not satisfied, then I, then you may see them looking out for for somebody else out there. But I think right now, I think this team as it stands right now, going into training camp. It's probably pretty well set, John. I think it. I think it is, Bo. You know, yeah. you've seen a lot of depth at the corner, at the free safety spot, especially at the interior line, as you just yep. mentioned. All those guys. You've got it at running back. You've got it at receiver. I would think injury will dictate what position yep. uh, in in the preseason or in training camp, especially now with all these teams being able to keep ninety for yep. those four games. Yep. There's not going to be that. You know, massive. Uh, you know, at, cut to seventy-five, yeah. and everybody's scurrying for a position yeah. of need because you're trying to get guys to play in the fourth game. So that's all going to happen at once. Well, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, you know that, that last that, that last preseason game. I, I last well, you just play a Thursday game. They're, they're all Thursday games, yes. right? So you play a Thursday preseason game, and then the next day there goes you know over fifteen hundred people, fifteen hundred guys yeah. out of the league at that point, and uh, it's going to be mayhem at that point. But hey, that's 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 what they got. Um, so Orlando Franklin, no, don't think so. Uh, uh, at Mills, Jerry, eighty, Bo and John, what are your thoughts on T.J. McDonald? Um, you know, thumbs up. I think thumbs up with T.J. McDonald. I think the best thing about it is he's going to get to practice with him through these OTAs, mini camp, training camp, play preseason games, and then he's out for eight games. Yeah. Um, and, and then he comes back. But, you know, I think you mentioned it last week. Hey, how, how great is it to know you're going to have a guy like that coming back fresh, healthy, and ready to go for the second half of the season when you're really going to want to make that push? T.J. McDonald is a complete stud. Yep. This guy is a stud, and he can play back off the line of scrimmage. He can play close to the line of scrimmage. I think the addition of Allen back yep. there gives uh, this team huge security for that. You know the exposure you're going to have in the first eight weeks. You've got still got Michael Thomas that you know has yep. experience at multiple positions on the defensive side. You still need to see some growth from Walt Aikens and what he can do if he's pinched uh, to play. But T.J. McDonald is a complete. Complete stud. Love him at the safety yep, position. Yep. Just looking forward to getting for him to uh, be able to get in the field and start playing. Uh, at uh, J Church Five, do you think you guys think the Dolphins are set, or should we still get at free agents such as Revis, Mangold, or Clady? Well, I think we both talked about saying I think they're set right now. Uh, of those guys out there, and certainly any of those guys' dollars would be uh, is going to be a That's deciding right. factor with with anybody like that. But of those three, if somewhere down the road. Mangold is the only guy that interests me only because he can play guard, he can play center. If something happens to uh, uh, to Pouncey, you've got him there. But I don't, I'm not saying that they're going to make that move. I just I don't think they are. I think they're going to go to training camp the way they are right now unless something would happen in between now and then. Clady, I don't think they need another offensive uh, an offensive tackle. No. And I don't think Revis is worth the investment. Yeah, I, I just don't think you're going to – you know, money, I think the key – to what you said, Bo, is money is a factor. Yeah. You know, with, with the first, with, with all three of those guys, yeah. you just never know. You get into a veteran presence on a team, you better have 
quite the void at yeah. that position if you're going to bring somebody in like that. Now, Mangold may may be able to come in yeah. and, and play multiple positions. And, you know, the, all those guys have made their money and yeah. made their mark in the National Football League. So if it, there's a guy out there that wants to play and, and his play overrides what that yeah. number is at the, at the bottom of his check – uh, then you've got a chance. But right now, I think the Dolphins are set at all three of those positions. And, and look, I, I wouldn't want to bring Revis. I wouldn't want to take reps away uh, f- from from those cornerbacks out there. Uh, from Xavier Howard. From Xavier yeah. Howard. Uh, from go down Maxwell. the list. Yep. You just go down the list of all those cornerbacks. And Tankersley now young, in the mold. You've got young cornerbacks. Yeah. You know, to bring a guy in that probably would play with you for a year and maybe take some reps for those guys. Stay where well, you're it wouldn't at. be a year. You'd be renting. You, yeah, that's you, you know, it. You'd, you'd be, be renting, renting for, for six season. weeks, yeah, whatever eight weeks, it is. whatever yeah. it is. Exactly. Yeah. I'd just soon let these young guys get their reps, get the, you know, get get better as they're going to get better throughout the course of, of a season. El Chapo Jr., how cool would it have been to go to an NFL practice when you guys were in high school? Who was out there today? I know last week it was New Orleans and Hialeah, Miami Lakes Hialeah, was Miami out Lakes there. Miami Lakes today, yeah. and then uh, one of the academies is out uh, for Friday or for uh, yeah, Hollywood Hills, the girls' flag football team's coming yeah. as well on Thursday, so yeah. that'll be nice to see. Yeah, I, I look in high school. I, you know, the first first NFL game I saw was the first NFL game I played in. <laughs> so for me to be for me able to go to an NFL practice and watch guys pretty when I was cool. in high school w- would have been really cool. Yeah, that's... and especially the you see the pictures and the video of those guys out there where they're walking off the field talking to to their position guys that's and stuff right. like that. I mean, how, how valuable is that for these kids? I don't think those kids realize when, when they signed up for this, you know, they were going to probably sit in the stands and yeah. kind of hang out. Yeah. The, these kids from, from all the high schools that have been here and all the ones that will follow, they are on the field, yeah. on the sidelines, and they're interacting with Andre Branch when he's doing his individual drills. Yeah. Or, you know, if it's, if it's Landry or Stills talking it with the wide receivers. Yeah. Or they have, you know, Pouncey interacting as he's working on the side with some of the bigger linemen. Yeah. Or Dominic and Sue coming over and shaking hands. Those guys, our guys, have been terrific yeah. with, with the high school uh, teams that have been here. And, and the youth programs uh, department has done such a nice job of bringing guys yeah. in and bringing teams in. And the coaches you know, have been able to, to go with Trey on Dolphins Daily yeah. and, and do a good job with that. And some of the players have been able to do that as well. So, uh, you know, the Dolphins have done, as an organization, have done a really nice job in getting out into the community and reaching out to these teams. Yeah. And it's been, you know, Dade and Broward, and, and, yeah. and it's been an awesome job by them yeah, so far. It's, it's, it's great that they go out and let these uh, these kids come and, <clears throat> and watch. And like you said, it's just got to be a dream come true uh, for those guys and how much knowledge they can come away with, uh, if you know, as much as they want from talking to these guys. That's right. Great thing. At Roman's place, Tannehill needs a couple of two-minute game-winning drives <laughs> to be in the upper echelon. Well, I think that's I, I think that's it. Look, he's overcome, you know, he's checked some things off. Oh, he can't throw the long ball. He's one of the, one of the more successful long ball throwers that's right. in the National Football League league last year getting better at that but you're right it's, it's what i talked about the, a little bit earlier it's it's going down taking the ball down the field at the end of a half at the end of the game to win football games that are going to vault ryan in, into the next level of those quarterbacks out there yeah, I, I agree with you 100 I, I do too you know ryan has taken a, a huge leap in his game and i think he's going to be so much better and so much comfortable in this offense in the year two with Adam Gase. You know, Adam Gase had to learn Ryan Tannehill. But Ryan Tannehill had to learn Adam Gase a little bit yeah. and the way he p- calls a game, the way he tries to fit in different things throughout the week to, to prepare these guys for different situations. So, you know, Ryan has taken those steps. And, you know, if he's healthy this year, comes back, he has his mobility, I think that's going to help him a lot too. Because if it's not there, man, this guy can tuck it and get out of the pocket and make a first down and make a play to extend drives yeah. to keep this offense on the field. And most importantly, get that football in the end zone yeah uh, McLovin how do you guys watch practice differently from a fan I don't know about you John I, I'm not a big formation guy I'm an individual guy I watch individual players at their positions and usually what I'll do is I'll watch the skill guys I'll watch the wide receivers and the DBs when they're doing seven on seven right when they're doing you know when they're or, or when they're doing one-on-ones and those types of things and then when they come to team, I always watch the interior line. Watch mm-hmm. the interior line, and then watch the linebackers, and then I'll spread my view of field right. vision and watch everything else. But I think most fans, uh, you know, watch the football. I think most fans that come out and watch, they watch the quarterback get the ball, they watch where the ball's going, 
and, and that's it. I, I just tend to look. I tend to look different. I just I like to look at players and, and, and evaluate how, how how they're playing more from a fundamental standpoint. They're getting themselves in the right position, or you know, are they are they standing too tall or standing low? All those types of things. To me, th- th- that's what I watch. I, I you, like you, you. You look at it differently because from a quarterback standpoint. I like looking obviously. at it like you said. You know, I like to watch the football, but I like watching as a play caller. You know, if I see a certain formation mm-hmm. and I'm looking at leverage from mm-hmm. a guy, or I'm looking at Ryan Tannehill's mannerisms as he's looking off when he gets the football compared to when he was at the line of scrimmage, and then I take that wider view as well, and I try to look at individuals on you know where's my matchup, where would I want to go with the football. Mm-hmm. Uh, where's the strength and the weakness of this defense? Is a guy like, uh, say, Jones, Rashad Jones off the hash, where when motion takes him that way, is he going to go to that man-to-man yeah. guy? So I'm kind of looking as a quarterback and a play caller. And then on the defensive side, I like to watch them in individual drills to see who pays attention to certain drills and and. They come out of their breaks the right yeah, way. Right, yeah. who, who catches the football all the time? Yeah. When, the, when the coaches are just throwing them the football. Who, who tucks it away who ta- you know, Who yeah. does all those little things that do they carry over into practice? Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, it, it's funny because we'll stand, I stand out there sometimes with Nat before a game and, and you watch and you go, look at a guy. He just doesn't put the ball away. Doesn't, you know, just grips it and throws it away. And, you know, just little, little things, little things, little details that make a big difference when the game starts. And then you see in the game, and the guy's running with the ball loose, and some of you go, oh, you know, you, you just... To, to its simplest form, you know, you're running right, ball on your outside yeah. hand, and somebody's got it on the inside, and then all of a sudden yeah. you see a fumble, and you've talked about it two hours prior going, yeah. you know, that ball should be on the outside hand. Yeah. It's just little things that I know that coaches pay particular attention to because those are the things that add up. Sometimes you lose possession of the football, you lose a game. Yep. You know, you, you don't close out something. So they pay attention to those little details. At Diana, I think it's Fame or Fom. Bo, I miss your sweet potato fries. They're gone? They're gone. We've been moving them around a little bit. All right. But, eh, whatever. Uh, Periscope, I hear Lippitt is bailing out. Do you think he starts over Xavier? Lippitt is oh, balling out. Balling out. out. Yeah, I'm like bailing out. Yeah, he's no, been. No, I, I think, look, t- you know, I, I read an article, read his comments where he said, hey, look, I'm planning on being a starter. That's right. Forget this giving up this position to Xavier Howard. I'm going to go out there and battle for it. And I believe it. And look, I, I you watched him get, you watched, he may be, maybe since I've been here, around here watching this team practice, he may have gotten better from the beginning of the season till the end of the season than almost any player I've ever and watched. And he had to play. And he had to play. You know, that's the biggest thing. You can get yeah. better and progress, you know, being a guy that's not playing and he's he's running the scout team. You, you watch him progress. Well, he's getting a little bit better. He's getting a little bit better. This guy had to go out and play in games and get better on the field, you know, through, from the first quarter to the fourth quarter. And he's gotten his hands on a lot of footballs throughout OTA so yeah. far. So it's been nice to watch his progression, taking it from last year and the confidence and the skill set that he's built and bringing it now into a, into a season where he feels like, you know what, you're going to have to beat me out yeah. to play that yep. position, yep. which he's is a good attitude to confident have. Confident in himself, and then he's out there working – uh, to do everything he can. <clears throat> so let's we're going to finish the way we started, John. You go on, you back on this the logo. Girl, Diane again. Do you think Gaze loves the throwback logo out of respect for the champions? How the hell do I know? Hey, it's a good looking logo. I don't know. Who wouldn't like it? It just looks better. Yeah. The colors look better. The logo looks better. It's the best everything uniform. Looks better. It's the best uniform it, in it football. Yes, there it is. It's the best uniform and in I, football. Yes, I think Adam Gaze likes that logo. Yes. I think I like that logo. I think Leon likes that logo. I think John likes that I logo. I think 99.9% of the people like that logo, but they ain't going to get that <laughs> logo until the NFL Three says, more years. you can have that logo now. It's, huh? a mo- it's a movement, Bo. It's a movement. It is. You know what I'm going to feel sorry for? He's got the logo on. Where's, you know what I'm going to feel sorry for? Right those guys out there that got the tattoos of the new logo when the old when they go back to the old logo. <laughs> those are the guys I feel sorry for. That's right. They're gonna have to get a change. John, always play with my man. That was fun. All right. That was fun. Clackalac. Get your cackalack and a clackalack and what was it? Let me go back to where I was. What was it? Crackalack and crackalack and get your crackalack together. All. That's gonna do it for the show today. You know what? It was so good today. We're gonna come right back tomorrow and crack crackalack it again <laughs> at you tomorrow. No logo talk tomorrow though, please. Oh, I'm sure there will. There's be. a moratorium on logo talk starting right now. We'll see you later. <laughs>